Okay, so guys, as we said, the moment of rotation around an axis is the projection of the moment of rotation around O on this axis. And I can find it using the dot cross product or what is called dot triple product. Now, if you remember, we said that if I need to find the moment of rotation of one force around a point, and this force was passing through this point, so I'm sure that this moment should be equal to zero. Because if I have a force that is passing through O, this force cannot do any rotation. So the moment of a force passing through the point of rotation is equal to zero. And this is also valid for the force or for the moment of rotation around an axis, which means if I have a force that is passing through this axis, the moment of rotation should be equal to zero. So this is very similar to the moment of rotation around a point. However, I have also an additional rule for the zero moment around an axis. Basically, if I have a force that is parallel to this axis, then the moment of rotation of this force around this axis is also equal to zero. So as a recap, for the moment of rotation around an axis, I have two rules. The first rule is that if this force is passing through this axis, the moment is equal to zero. And the second rule is that if this force is parallel to this axis, the moment is also equal to zero. In order to understand this, let's do this experiment right here. So if I have to rotate this face here, okay, so this book face, I have to rotate it. Now, I should do a moment that is perpendicular to this face. So this moment, this force will do a rotation. Now, if I meet or if I apply a force that is passing through this X here, so this is my axis. So if I make a force that is passing through this axis, then I will never have a rotation around this axis. So I should basically make a force that is not intersecting this axis. In this case, I will have a rotation around this axis. Now, what if I apply a force that is parallel to this axis, like this one? This vertical force is parallel to this axis. I will never have a rotation. Basically, the moment here is equal to zero. So this means that if I need to compute the moment of a force around an axis, I should put on, on my mind that if this force is either passing through this axis or if this force is parallel to this axis, then of course the moment should be equal to zero. Now let's do the first problem on the moment of rotation around an axis. problem I should find the resultant moment around x, y, and z. I will do this problem in two methods. The first one is the vector method or the cross product where I should not worry about any sign or any direction. So the moment sign and direction will be given implicitly by the answer. And the second method is the 2D method and I will do it for the axis x, y, and z the, using the same one that used in, that, that I have used in order to find the moment around the point O. So first of all, what I will do, which is the first method, is to find the moment in vector for around O. So if I know the moment around O in vector form, I can find the projection 
of this moment around any axis. So let's find M O. M O basically is R cross F. And since here I need to find the resultant moment, so M O resultant will be the sum of R cross F, which means it will be R1 cross F1 plus R2 cross F2 plus R3 cross F3. Guys, don't be confused. I cannot say that MO is equal to R cross F resultant, where F resultant is F1 plus F2 plus F3. This is totally wrong because R is not the same for each force. I have R1 for F1, R2 for F2, R3 for F3. If and only if I have the same R, which is very rare, the same R for F1, F2, F3, which means they have a common point, I can say that M resultant is equal to this R, which is from O to the common point between these forces, cross F1 plus F2 plus F3, which is F resultant. So let's do this one. Now what is R1? R1 is basically from O to any point that belongs to F1, so I will take it as A. So basically this is equal to O A cross F1 plus O B cross F2 plus O C cross F3. Now here I can do the matrix or I can directly do this cross product because in fact in this example F1 is along Y, F2 is along uh, F2 is along Z or minus Z and F3 is along minus X. So I can do this using the distributive law or using the matrix. It's up to you. It will give you the same answer. Now what is OA? OA is basically XAI plus YAJ plus ZAK. So I need to find the coordinates of A and of course B as well as C. So what are the coordinates of A? Basically, A belongs to the plane YZ. So A has 0x. Z of A is 2. And Y of A is also 2. So OA is 2J plus 2 K. Cross F1 and F1 is along minus Y. So it is minus 60 J. So what is B? B basically has an X of minus this distance right here which is minus 3. Has a Y of uh, 2 and also it is in the negative y so it is minus 2 and has a z of plus 2 which is this one so this is b basically which means ob is minus 3i plus minus 2k so without this plus plus, sorry, minus 2j plus 2k cross f2 and f2 is in minus z so it is minus 50k. What is c? c basically uh, is the symmetry of a with respect to z. So c has the same z, it has a negative y and x with c0. So C is 0, so this is C, 0, minus 2, 2. Okay, so plus, minus 2, 
OLJ plus 2K cross F3 and F3 is in minus I. So cross minus 40I. So let's do the cross product. Now J cross J is of course 0. So J cross J is 0. K cross J, if you apply this method, I, J, K, let's say this is the positive direction, because it is I, J, K. Then this means that K cross J, K cross J is in the negative direction, so it is minus I, and I have a minus here, so it is 120 I, this is the first moment, plus now, what is I cross K? I cross K is also negative. So, it is minus J. So, this is minus 150 J. What is J cross K? J cross K is positive I minus minus plus. So, plus 100 I and of course K cross K is 0. Of course, you can do it using the matrix. And then, what is a J cross I? J cross I is negative, so it is minus K minus minus plus, so it is minus 80 K. And what is K cross I? Now K cross I is plus J, and I have a negative sign here, so minus 80 J. So now let's group all I together. I have 220 I and I have minus 150 minus 80. So it is 230 J and finally minus 80 K and this is my answer. Am I done? Basically no, because I should answer that question which is that to determine the resultant moment around X, Y and Z. So basically since my moment around O has three components in I, J, K, so this will be the moment around I or around X, this will be the moment around J and this will be the moment around K. So basically MX will be 220 I my will be minus 230j and mz will be minus 80k. Now let's do it using the second one.